All right, 27-year-old craftsman table saw. Modest saw, but a nice one. I've had it forever. And it's time. It's rusty. It's a mess. The tabletop is a mess. A lot of people want to know about how to restore uh, the cast iron top. I do it a little bit differently, and I have some advice and some suggestions for everybody. So how did I go from making it look like this initially to what you see now? So that's the question. As the, we'll have the answers for you, and I've got some other suggestions as well towards the end. Um, let's have some fun. Let's hang out in the shop. Let's fix this thing up. And then I need to use it like right away. So I'm back into doing some woodwork and everything on the shop and on the house again. I need to get this tool in good working shape. And why have something that just doesn't work well, right? That it, it's just sticky, nothing's working really right. It's time. Let's get started. <laughs> Everything is all gummed up and gross. So I bought this new years ago. When it was new. Oh, big mics here. When it was new. And as you can see, this this thing's not new now. This is a nice machine, nice Craftsman. 10-inch um, belt drive, three horsepower, max. It's in pretty good shape. But I'm going to clean it. So it's time, right? The plan is... Just to hose it down, hit it with some, you know, super clean. I know you're thinking, oh, well, you'll see. It'll co it'll come out good. This is all rusted. It's all gummed up. Everything is gummed. All the blades, all of this has just got surface rust. So all that's going to have to be addressed. It's I tried blowing up with compressed air. The stuff is stuck on. So let's get it cleaned up. And we'll worry about, you know, the motor and everything. And all of that tomorrow, we can, or t later on, we can kind of open it up and blow it out with compressed air and lubricate it. We'll get it going again. But first, let's just get it really clean. All right, make the mess once. Well, that's what's left of that sponge. Yeah, I just wanted to get a little bit more underneath here, get some more of that staining off. And you can see it's a combination of, well, cigarette smoke, but mostly oil. Right, here's our sticker. It's burnt oil and just debris in the air and oxidation and just years of just sitting and, you know, being used as well. So, shout out to Super Clean. So, I'm using a combination. Um, almost done. All right, I interrupt this video for this interruption for Super Clean. And I interrupt those interruptions with this interruption for Super Clean. So, big shout out to them. It really makes a you know, easy work of it. It's all that rust. It really isn't really just rust so much as it's it's just gross junk. All right, a little bit more. I'm going to work a little bit longer just to get a little bit more of it off. See, even some of the rust came off with the super clean. What was left of that Scotch Brite pad? And then we'll be able to put some acid on that phosphoric acid. Now, when I turn it upright, we'll take this off and we'll get in there. Yeah, that's better. Look how much cleaner everything is. We're gonna get this screw up, we'll get in there. And I'll check the blade in a bit, but yeah, she's better. She's gonna be like like a white haze, but when I'm done, I'm gonna hit hit the top with some Scotch Brite and some of the phosphoric acid in a bit. And all the other like cast areas. You'll see some of these cast areas will come back, so I'm gonna give it some time. But then when it's all dry, I'll probably hit it with uh, some clear. Especially these areas here, because you'll see all this rust, that's all going to come up. Wax this area, or silicone, or whatever you want to use. Some people use linseed oil. There's all kinds of things. That requires maintenance. If it's uh, soil that's exposed to humidity, like here on the island, salt air. Oh, you can see the acid sort of bubbling up that rust. It's got to be clean first, so you have to use... Um, you know, like a degreaser. You see it? See what it's doing? It's lifting it. And it's non-destructive, so that'll do a good job. I got it on everything. I need to put more in the bottle, though, but I'm gonna put it on everything. And, uh, yeah, it's doing a good job. And hit it with a little bit of scotch Bright. Probably have to rinse it off, because it's got a lot of overburden on it. 
Well, you can see it's a little dark out today, which is good. It's, it's cloudy, right? overcast, and every now and then a dribble of rain, which is perfect for this kind of work. So we even got that a little bit. You see how it's starting to really craze up? Yeah, it's done. Well, here's the Osfo. Skyco by Skyco. That's the uh, phosphoric acid that I like to use. So very nice, prepares rusted surfaces for painting, but it will remove the rust. You see? Now, I rinsed it off and I scotch brite it. I just put a little water on it and I scotch brite and rinse it. And I just put another layer of, or another application of phospho. And you know, we got a couple little spots, but this will be the last application. It's getting a little late. And then the rest we can do when we bring it in and it's dry, you know, tomorrow. And I try to get in there a little bit. It'll dissolve some of the rust, but that's not really important. And you'll see this will start to white up. So it'll be a zinc coating. And it'll protect it from the atmosphere. Um, it won't flash rust. It might in a couple of spots, but like I said, we're going to polish it. I'm sorry I'm not showing every little step. Because gloves, acid, cameras, no. Yeah, that's getting there. That was pretty bad. All right, I'm going to let it sit for like another half hour or so. Right, I've been letting it sit for over an hour because it's not really cold or warm. But you can see. See, it's, it's lifting. All right, I'm going to give it a wipe down with this, whatever's left on there. Give everything a rinse, blow it with compressed air, bring it in. Let it dry overnight, and we'll take a look in the morning. The next morning. All right, I know a little shadowy, but... So last night I put on... I just kind of rubbed it good with some of my transmission sauce. And I blew out in here and I let it dry. See, I got the crap all over the place. That's just a slurry of whatever sawdust was stuck in there. I blew everything out, it's all dry. Let me wipe it down. We're gonna throw a little bit of clear on it. I'll show you what I'm gonna use. And then we'll dress the top before I clear this area here. And I'll show you what I'm gonna do there. All right, it's time to paint it. Now, you'll see on the table, I got a whole bunch of junk here that we're gonna be working with today. Just to kind of get up and get rid of a whole bunch of junk that I got laying around on the table. Oh, actually, that, does, that makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. This is a uh, world-class fast activator. It's no good, All right? Like I said, a lot of this stuff is just, we gotta get rid of it, fellas, All right? There's a little bit in here. It's a tiny little bit, it's it's making a skin. You hear it? We, we got a little bit. You're gonna think I'm crazy for the mixture, but I've done this kind of stuff before. We use it on a project. It can take all day and all night to dry. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then later on, I'll show you what, what I would recommend using that's cheap, quick, and simple that I use in the shop for well, so many of these machines that I do uh, on a regular basis, and it's inexpensive. Let's take a look. All right, now to get started. Now I'm gonna use my my little jam gun, HVLP, and even with an HV, we're still gonna wind up wasting a lot of paint, blowing past it. And we don't wanna, I mean, we could have runs and drips, right? Do we care, fellas? The, the problem is, is that the paint is porous at this point, and you could see that wasn't just dirt and filth. Some of it was the rust permeating through. So we're gonna lock it down. And we, you know, with no point in putting color on. You can, but we'll just use up the clear that we have. Now, let me show you what I got. Uh, this is Universal Clear Coat, the SEM. We're gonna use you know, standard lacquer thinner. Um, this I, is an old can I refill. So it's just standard cheap lacquer thinner. And we are gonna put a little naphtha in it. That'll make it dry pretty damn fast. In here, we can also add, by the way, you can add a little bit of Select Prime it's a similar product, but this is for our primer surfacer. But it's, it's very similar, it will help activate. This is our backup in case we can't get enough activator out of the other container. And as an emergency, this is some stuff that I had mixed up a while back. It's got some thinner in it. It's starting to yellow. 
but it does have a little activator in it. We can add this in, dump it in towards the end, and that will help activate. And these projects are fun because we don't have to get crazy. When you're doing a basic restoration or refurbish on a machine, it's so forgiving. Because nobody really cares. You know, do what you can do. You can always mix up some more, by the way. Oh, that's plenty. That's a lot of paint. And like I said, we'll mix up more if we have to. And now we'll dump in some lacquer thinner. And again, I, I, I'm just looking for the drip test. Let's see. Yeah, drip test says it's good. Yeah, we're real close. Now we'll try a little bit of naphtha. Just to get rid of it. Because we want a translucent effect. I'm not looking for gloss. Now, let's see what we can get out of this guy. Let me see if I can get it open. Although I put the plastic on. That sometimes makes it easier to get apart. Yeah, we're getting it. Alright, that's probably enough to start off with. That's a lot of paint in there. We're going to want to let this settle for a little while because that stuff is so thick. To sort of finish it off, we'll put a touch of this activator in. I can feel it on the bottom. It's getting a little thick. Let's hope it doesn't flash in the can. I may have to put a little bit more thinner in, believe it or not. That, that activator was thick. It, all the solvents are drying out of it. All right, I'm going to go grab my mask, and you're not going to see me in a minute, but I'm going to lay the thing down on its side and see what I can get to. I want to get to the underneath first while I'm setting up. Yeah, she looks real good. I actually had to go back and add more thinner. And it's still a little too thick. But it looks real good. I, I kind of got in as far as I could. You waste a lot of paint trying to get in areas like this or up in there. All right, let's see if we can get another shot. Yeah, up in there, and in there, and what have you. But look, I literally just finished painting it. Look, I'm rubbing on it. But we'll give it another couple of minutes. Let me take a quick break. So... You know, it's nice to be able to clear over any stickers. By the way, I recommend doing that. I always forget. Um, a quick wipe with a mild detergent or no thinner on a sticker or something that you want to save. And then put a good automotive clear on it just from the spray can. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But if you really want to save these stickers, all of these tags, they're not like boiler tags of your, you know. All right. I know the, the lighting is a little bit beat, but you can see it's, it's, you know, I mean, you can't work on it, but we can move it around. I'm not going to get a glove mark or anything when I go to grab it. I'm not going to lay it on this side to try to get in deep in the cavity. I'm afraid to. Without help, this was all adjusted, but it has been moved back and forth to the shed. But if I drop it, I'll rack it. So... I think that's just something we're going to have to live with. That gun is small. I'll try to get up in there to whatever, any spot I can't get to. But I pretty much hosed a lot of paint on. I don't want to just indiscriminately put paint all up in here, fellas, because we need to lubricate. And, you know, I kind of went blind, but it's okay. You know, it's the life we have to live. Now, this looks pretty good, just like this. Now, many people would probably just use it like this. For rough cut, rough lumber, a lot of the work I need to do on the door frame over here, um, some of the other things I need to do. So we're going to go to the next step. We're going to take the 320 on this and just see what's going on. I may just blow the clear on the whole thing. Um, may not be worth just getting crazy over it. Usually the waxes don't work for the most part. Let's just see what happens. 
Let's see if this has the torque to do it. It's grabbing good. Yeah, she's got the torque to do it. Just to clean it up a little. You'll see it'll come up very black. We're gonna hit this too, because this this blue snot's on it. Let's see what the reveal is. Yeah. That's probably a lot of graphite. We gotta get in here with the Scotch Brite one more time. But, well, I think we don't have to. But I'm gonna go over all of it, and then we gotta clean it. Uh, we can clean it with mineral spirits, or uh, the la and then the lacquer thinner. We're gonna spray it, but I want to do the other surface, the painted surface too, because there's glue snots and stuff on it. And I don't see why, you know, we might want to try just coating it light with the clear. And the worst case is it will peel. But I've rarely ever had anything peel. The best way to put the clear on would be to Hit this with acid one more time after you clean it really good. It's the acid that, that opens up the pores and allows the clear to soak in. That's why we use it on auto body. Um, a lot of the primers have acid in them, self-etching primers. But yeah, it looks real good. I'll get you in close in a minute. That looks really good. Now, sure, if you were willing to, you know, maintain the saw on a regular basis, I would just leave it like this. You could see the rough cut texture on the way they cut the top. But it's flat. It's nice. Look at how this rag is. It's just black. So let's get that out of here. It's, I still got to clean it more. But, you know, I just kind of went over everything real quick with that 320 just fast. There's no point in polishing this. You see these cuts... You see, you could see the striations from the tool that went over it. It's like a, that's, it's kind of like the same thing as when we mill heads in the machine shop, engine heads, you know, cast iron heads. It's a very coarse process. You'd have to work this for a while, but I don't think you'd ever get this shiny. Not like bright and shiny. It, it's not that kind of uh, iron. So let me finish cleaning it off. We're going to go to, I think, like mineral spirits and and then maybe um, lacquer thinner, and, and then I'll mix up, well, I have a little bit more clear left. Oh, it's shiny, I know, there's always glare. I finished up with, well, I used a little solvent, then I finished up with some uh, window cleaner with alcohol in it, and a white paper towel so I could see. And I think she looks real good. Try to remove some of the glare. All right, now I wanna make sure my paint is thin. Um, like I said, I threw a little thinner in my paint gun, shook it around, blew it through, so I could go and do this. See, we got in there with clear, for the most part. You know, as best as you can, what are you gonna do? You can't, you know, uh, the machine is, is, is well serviced. We'll get it outside in a little while, we'll take a look at it. Three hours later. All right, quick look. I just moved it outside. It's getting windy and we're supposed to get a storm, so. We'll finish it tomorrow, it's the end of the day, but I figured we could at least get a look with some, you know, exterior light, because that garage is not properly lit yet. But I think it looks pretty good, fellas. She's looking real good. And like I said, it dried like right away. So, one day and we're good to go, but it'll harden over time become durable, which is what's nice about these kinds of products. All right, let me bring this in, clean up the paint guns and whatever else, and just straightening up in here. But and tomorrow, we'll, we'll lubricate the, end, the motor and get all the uh, movable points lubricated and working, and we'll finish up the video, because I have some other tips for you guys, I promised. Day three. So we're essentially done with the saw. I just wanted to give you guys some close-ups. So this is my 40 tooth blade that was on there. 
and I did the same thing, all right? Super clean, get all the junk off. It's a braised blade, so we don't have to worry about anything. Then the acid, scotch bright, and then that little bit of that clear. So I had this nice finish blade, uh, 60 tooth. That was on the chop box, and I did that one too. So it's nice, it's ready to go. And everything is dry now, like everything is good to go. I did the top, and you can did the tools because they were all rusty just to get rid of the clean everything up that's associated with it. get rid of what was here and remember i did this guy so everything is basically dry like it needs to be in the sun or spend some more time in the heat it's kind of cool now we're getting into that time of year but it's it's good no issues with sliding things uh, but I, again, it needs to harden. Um, so let's get to oiling and lubrication. I'll show you what I like to use. And I got some tips for you coming up, so stay tuned. So let's get right into it. So chain wax. Give you a good look at that. So essentially, a couple of things we can do with this. So this is a paraffin base. That's the wax that's in it. Remember your bicycle chain, right? We got the two here. We got the liquid wrench, chain, and cable lube talk about that in a minute so this is paraffin based so it goes on like a penetrant lube but then it will dry <clears throat> it's kind of like a dry lube but it's paraffin just like on your bicycle chain you guys know once you put you know a good lubricant on your chain something like this it stays on there it doesn't go flinging off chain and cable lube which I really like it's an anti-sling formula so any area like on the screws or whatever or to seep into a bearing it's a little bit more gel like more like an oil slash gel slash then not solid but dries and it's interesting it just behaves different so if you have something that's a little more sticky that doesn't want to move if you just spray this on it may not help um, you could start off with this on a saw and then maybe go to the wax because you don't want like just a penetrant a regular penetrant will get things moving but it, it, the vehicle will dry and then there's really nothing left so unless you're talking about a Teflon or a PTFE or something like that. But if you want to stay a little bit more conventional, no silicones, because you don't want to have silicone anywhere near if you're going to be painting something. If you don't want to oil the top of the table or clear coat it or the paste wax don't work, a lot of the paste wax that a lot of woodworkers use, that's for furniture. It's not for machines. So they're not really thinking in terms of machines. Here's a suggestion. Now, I haven't tried it, but here's a suggestion. And I have used it on other cast pieces. You, you might want to try is getting the tabletop, the, you know, the iron clean kind of the way we did it, and then spray this on. Take the, the, the stick off the end. Spray it on. Wipe it in with like a blue towel. Like get like a coat. Let it dry for, I don't know, like an hour. Walk away and then come back and buff it in. Just pop this cap up. Yeah, it's nice because you can control. I'm going to try and fill it up a little bit because it hasn't been done. Now this has a thicker oil in it, synthetic, semi synth Yeah, that's good. Oh, but it's nice, the, both of those are nice because you can get into areas. And now for the other side, we're going to use the chain and cable loop. On threads and, and mating surfaces, it's a nice idea to use the chain wax. On threaded areas that are more blind, you're gonna want more of this kind of a lube to start off with, just to get everything going. I need another can, I got another can. So I'm gonna work on all of that. We're gonna get the screw from underneath here. I'm gonna reach in. I'll get to everything I can. There's a bearing over there, I can see it. So I have another couple of fresh cans and we'll try to unlock it and get everything going. I'm just gonna go around the whole thing well, I tell you, at some point, you have to go through everything. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that on there, and we'll wipe off the excess. But yeah, that had to be sanded, and I had to adjust the belt, and, you know, all in here, too. So if you want to protect it, like I shot some of it on there, but, you know, to adjust the belt, oops, we're running out. I've been getting it on everything I can get it on. And then just let it dry. 
But I, I went in, I lubricated the heck out of everything. It was stuck. All of this stuff was just so stuck. And I'm not too concerned about, you know, getting it too sploogy. I did get a little bit on the belt. But then I blew a compressed air, so I did finish up, and I'll show you in a minute. I just had a bug just go right into my glasses. This would need to go on. There we go. A lot of times I don't use it, but I want to make sure I have it. And I also have the featherboard stuff. All right, hold on. So after I went through everything, with the chain lube and the chain wax, I blew it out, ragged it out, and I followed up with uh, white lithium, which is good, let it dry. So this is more of like your dry lube. Again, this will also go in like a penetrant, but then it will dry, and you can. I wiped off any excess as best I could. Blew it again, went in there, wipe, wipe, wipe. And uh, just trying to get to everything I can, let's see. Sounds good, let's take a look at the belt. It needed to be tightened. Belt's a little old, had a little bit of a, a spot on it, and I did get lube on it, unfortunately. All right, let me get you guys out of here on this. So the last suggestion is this product here. Uh, and what this is, it's just this particular brand, but this is just a floor finish. So it's uh, like on my vinyl floors. It's a polymer that essentially sets up. It is water-based, but you can use it. And I've used it on this table here, this nice finish. I've used it on the countertops. I have used it on metal and cast. Let's take a look. I like to use it on my lift table for the shop. And let's just go take a quick look at it. So you can see here, right, it, it does a nice job. Standard procedure is I clean the work table off, usually with a little bit of super clean, a rag, just to get the grease off. And then I lay it down. Now, I've had this table for a few years now, and I started protecting it about two years ago with this. On a regular basis, it lasts for a long time, and it just provides an additional coating to keep off the nonsense that, you know, is on, you'll find it on, the ta on these tables. Now, of course, that table takes a beating. You know, it's got some areas where there's some of the, the epoxy coat is missing, you know, the powder coat. But overall, and it's it's not slippery. Overall, it, it protects it from like a lot of paint over spray. It doesn't stick. Um, gasoline, if it sits too long, it will lift it up. It'll just dissolve it. But a lot of the products that I use, it just doesn't seem to affect it. So you could put it on a cleaned surface like any surface, even the painted surfaces on your saw or on the cast iron. So it's just a thought. And I thought, you know what? I haven't tried it yet, but I've tried it on other surfaces. We'll go over a picture right here, an actual snapshot of it. But whatever whatever product you want to use in that family, it's water-based, so you have to have everything degreased and then, you know, cleaned off well. And then I just lay it on. I leave it sit for a little while and I come back. They say you can wait like a day or whatever hours. There's an application procedure. I don't follow that. I let it dry good and I spill some more on, wipe it around, put another layer on and it's part of my general cleaning scenario. But I think overall this machine came out really well and I'm going to be really happy with it. I'm going to start using it tomorrow. So if you're looking for a machine like this and you keep passing them up and you're thinking, you know, garage sales, whatever, maybe you have one like me. It's been sitting around 27 years. I used it for quite a number of years. I had this place set up more as a wood shop. Initially, it fell down, the building fell down, I had to rebuild it, blah, 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 blah. Then I get into my other business, and I kind of got away from it. And like a lot of things in life, you get busy, and it just sits, and you don't think about it. And, well, the environment got at it. It was really sticky. It was jammed. Now, you know what? Now, it's not a boat anchor anymore, okay? Because that's kind of a big, heavy thing to have around, even if it is on wheels, because it's going to be in your way. So whether you have an older one or maybe you, like I said, see them around at garage sales or you see them on online, Facebook marketplace or something and you're thinking, how am I going to deal with it? These are some of the ideas, some of the things that I do. I like to do a lot of restorations, refurbs, rustifications, uh, mostly small equipment. Check out my channel, Arches Garage. 
um, small, you know, powered equipment, but there are other things too, and tools and whatever I can get my hands on that'll fit in the shop. Thanks for watching this episode of Archer's Garage, and I hope, hopefully this was helpful. I had a lot of fun. And if you guys hung out this long, thanks for hanging out in the shop, but uh, we don't go large. I'll see you guys later. Oh,